Hello, everyone. Welcome to this second section about indefinite integrals. So we've seen previously the definition of a primitive for a function. So big F is a primitive of small f if big F prime is equal to small f. But all the examples that we've seen in the previous section, I gave you the big F and you only had to verify and we only verified together that these functions were indeed primitives. But of course, the true question of this whole chapter is about finding yourself these big F. So like differentiation, we start with the basic formulas and we're going to look at basic, uh, basic properties and we're going to look at examples. And then we'll do more complex integration question using techniques of integration. So what are those basic formulas? So this section is all about those basic formulas and basic properties. So the first basic formula is that if you integrate a constant k, then you're going to get kx plus c. So for example, the integral of two would be two x plus c. Okay, so uh, if you have a constant, um, then that constant becomes that constant times x. And remember, remember, you always have to add plus c at the end for all those formulas. And again here, always, always take the time to think about these formulas as the reverse process of differentiation. If you differentiate, if you compute the derivative of kx plus c, you're going to get k plus zero. And that is why kx plus c is the family of primitives for k. All right, so now the real first formula, so for our infamous power functions, and just like differentiation, the power rule is always the trickier uh, basic formula because you need to read the power correctly. So when you integrate x to the power n, so what you do to that n is so let me just here so we want to integrate x to the n so x to the n so what you do here is uh, for example we know that when we differentiate the power goes down by one so because integrating is the reverse process you need to increase the power by n so if you integrate x to the power n you're going to get x to the power n plus one um, but you need to divide by n plus one because again if you're thinking about differentiation if you just write x to the power n plus one then the derivative would be n plus one times x to the power n so in order to cancel that coefficient you need to divide by n plus one so this means that this formula only works or always works except when n is minus one because you would create a division by zero. So in other words, x to the n, raise the power by one and divide by that new power. So then what's up when n is minus one? Well, when n is minus one, that's that's the, the formula here. Do we know a formula such that its derivative is one over x? Yes, we do when it's ln of x. So if you have to integrate one over x, so if you want to find the family of antiderivative of one over x, you're going to get ln of x plus c. Um, so don't forget the plus c in the previous formula. So here you should notice that there's an absolute value. The absolute value is just to make sure that the domain are the same. So one over x is defined everywhere except at zero, but ln of x is only defined for strictly positive values. So with the absolute value, everything is fine. That's a technical issue that we're, we're not going to be worried too much in this course because we're going to be using these formulas to model stuff. And typically the stuff, prices, quantity, are going to be positive quantities. So the absolute value will not make a big difference. But if you want to be strict and technical, and if you like precise stuff, the family of antiderivative of 1 over x is ln of x plus c. Actually, if you Google stuff, it's not the full family. So just as a, if you're curious, go find the real, the real family. But anyways, for us, don't worry, ln of x plus c, that's my indefinite integral for one over x. And then what about ex? So 
And if you want to find the family of R primitive for EX, because we know the derivative of EX is EX, then EX plus C is going to be the indefinite integral for EX. So again here, just remember all these formulas, all the, the, this list of basic formula, you know this list from differentiation. Okay, so the derivative of ln is 1 over x, the derivative of ex is ex. Those are the exact same formulas. They're just written in integral, integral form instead of differential form. So anyways, let's do some examples together. So let's integrate x to the power 4. So x to the power 4, so I'm going to use my power formula. So you're going to raise the power by 1. So x to the power 4 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 plus c at the end. Never forget your plus c. Now if you clean this up, x to the power 4 plus 1, that's the same thing as x5 over 5 plus c. And again here, so just as verification, if you compute the derivative of x5 over 5, and this will explain why we need that over 5 under, well, what is the derivative of x5? That's 5x4, and that over 5 is there to cancel that coefficient that you get by making that power fall, and then uh, the plus c will just become plus 0, which simplifies nicely to x4. So we can see here in this headless, legless sheep, that if you take your answer and you compute its derivative, you get back x4, the function in your in your uh, formula. All right, next, so we have 1 over x4, so just like differentiation, make sure you read the power correctly. So a little bit of preliminaries here, I'm not doing the integral yet, okay, I'm just rewriting that function, I just want to read the power correctly, my n in this question is minus 4. Okay, so that's my n, so I can apply my power formula. So you get x to the power minus 4 plus 1 over minus 4 plus 1. So the power, the new power, is the same as the coefficient at the denominator plus c. And make sure that you clean this up. So here, if I do clean this up, I get x to the power minus 3 over minus 3 plus c. If the question is just to integrate, you could leave it like this, but most likely the answers, if you have a if you're doing this exercise somewhere, probably they are getting rid of that negative power, bringing it down with the 3 and minus 1 over 3x cubed plus c is my family of primitives for 1 over x4. Last example, 1 over cubic root, uh, sorry, fourth root of x. Um, so that's the same thing as x to the power 1 4, but it's down there at the denominator, so it can go up, it can go up as x to the power minus 1 over 4. And for basic integration, this is the toughest part, just to read the coefficient correctly. So here we go, now I'm applying my power rule, so x to the power minus 1 over 4 plus 1 over minus 1 over 4 plus 1 plus c, okay. Don't be a C, okay, so don't forget your plus C. Um, I don't ask for much in terms of simplification, but I am expecting the powers to be a unique number. So in this case, minus 1, 4, plus 1, which is minus 1 over 4, plus 4 over 4, you get x to the power 3 over 4, over 2 over 4. If you're comfortable in your skin and you multiply by 4 over 3, you're a genius, okay. So then don't forget the plus C. And that's my family. Of course, I don't have an example with ex or 1 over x because the formula is the only example, unless we look at the basic properties. So the basic properties are the same as the, for integration, is the same as the basic properties for um, differentiation. If you have a function where you are looking at more than one term, so they are separated by plus or minuses, you can integrate term by term, and if they have coefficients, like a 2 times something, 3 times something, minus 2 times something, just keep the coefficient. So here this is summarizing this theorem, so if big F and big G are primitives for small f and small g, and then you construct this brand new function, which is a small f plus b 
um, small g, then small a big F plus small d big G, that's an example of a primitive, which means that the family will be a big F of x plus b big G of x plus c. Okay, so uh, anyways, all that just to say, go term by term, keep the coefficient. This is like differentiation. There's really nothing special about basic properties. Okay, so that's the point of that section. So just do it term by term. So let's go. Okay, so let's uh, do some examples and that will end the basic rules and the basic properties for integration. So first example, let's compute the indefinite integral of the function 5 minus 2x minus 2ex plus 3 over x. So here we go. So uh, let's, let's use the right notation. So let's compute the integral. Okay, so the integral of 5 minus 2ex plus 3 over x. So 5 will simply go to, that's my first first formula. So we'll go to 5x. And again here, if you think about it, the derivative of 5x is 5, getting back my first term. So now what is a primitive for ex? Well, a primitive for ex is ex, so you get minus 2ex. And again, if you differentiate minus 2ex, you're going to get minus 2ex again. What about 3 over x? Because 1 over x is ln of x. 3 over x, just keep the coefficient. So you're going to get plus 3 ln of, to be technical, absolute value of x. And then, so that's my 1 over x that becomes ln. And then don't forget the, at the end, your plus c. Okay, so again, your ex going to ex, that over x going to ln of absolute value of x. And don't forget your plus c at uh, the end. My next, exa my next example is just, again, uh, being comfortable at reading the correct power, we want to integrate 6x cubed plus 5x plus the cubic root of x squared plus 4 plus 2 over the fourth root of x. So 6x cubed is fine. We see that the power is 3, 5x. Just be careful. This means that the power is 1. The cubic root of x squared, because cubic root is 1 over 3, if you combine the cubic root and the square, the correct power is 2 over 3. 4 is just 4, pas de problème. And that 4 root at the denominator, just like earlier, that's the same thing as power minus 1 over 4. So here we go, term by term. Let's integrate. So the 6x cubed will become 6x3 plus 1. Now that we're geniuses, we know this was going to be a 4 over 4. The 5x1 will become 5x1 plus 1, which is 2 over 2. The x to the power 2 third will become x to the power 2 third plus 1. Remember, plus 1 in that case is 3 over 3. So you're going to get x to the power 5 over 3 divided by 5 over 3. Again, if you need to do the math, 2 third plus 1 is 5 over 3. And then the 4 will become 4x. And the 2x to the power minus 1 over 4, so we did that computation earlier, minus 1 over 4 plus 1 is 3 over 4 divided by 3 over 4. And don't forget to sign your work, okay, with a nice plus c at the end. And that's my family of primitives. That's my indefinite integral, or that's the result of integrate the following function. And for those two sections about basic formulas and basic properties, that's it. That's all. We're going to be moving, after we do a small break about one nice application, we're going to be moving into techniques of integration. Because sadly, there's no product or quotient or chain rule. It's slightly more technical. The similarities kind of end with the basic stuff. But anyways, for now, things are cool. Lish. Okay, so anyways, that's it. That's all. Bye-bye.